Can we give a loud shout to Jesus? New Dawn Camp 2023. Come on, you can do better than that. You can clap and shout to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Hey. Wow. Uh, before you sit, well, this morning, Apostle was teaching, and I was thinking to myself, what a blessing it is to have a shepherd who, whose heart for you. You know, whenever Jesus saw the multitudes, the Bible says he had compassion on them, and the thing that he did next for them was to teach them the word. It's like the person who teaches you the word of God is the person who loves you the most. The person who exposes you to the mysteries of God is the person who loves you the most. And I see apostle day to day, week to week, month to month, morning to evening, when he's tired, when his body is as if giving way, when he's there, ready to pour out, laboring in the word every single time. And so I would like us, Worship Harvest, to appreciate and honor Apostle Mose. Thank you. Thank you for teaching us the word, for creating opportunities like this where we just come and hear the word and you give birth to many church planters. Hey, who is not clapping? Is their name Apostle Mose? And can we appreciate Revma, our host here at Worship Harvest, Nalia? Hey! What a... Hey! 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 <laughs> awesome. We can have our seats. Okay. This morning, I'm really, really privileged to stand here. My name is Blesso. Ivan Homza, blessed. Um, I'm married to the most beautiful babe this side of heaven. Yeah, her name is Bobby. She's precious. Like, that's her name, eh? but she's also really precious. She's seated over there. By the grace of God, we have um, two wonderful children. <laughs> Two wonderful children. <laughs> I'll keep looking at the camera. I want to hear what is coming from this side or this side. <laughs> Two wonderful children, EJ and Bethel. And by the grace of God, we pastor worship Harvest Makere and lead the multitudes network now. Amen. Uh, <laughs> please. <laughs> I'm not despising any prophecies, though. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's really a great, great privilege and honor for me to stand here today. Um, I, after Apostle told, I was telling Pastor B3, Apostle, Apostle should just teach the whole day. <laughs> Until evening. And we go back home and come back and he teaches us again the whole day. Until evening, we go back, come back Saturday, he teaches the whole day. Yeah. Then we go, it's Sunday, he starts the whole day. Because whenever Apostle is teaching, things happen in my heart. Yeah, I was seeing things, I'm like, why haven't I seen these things before? Yeah, but thank God, that's the reason as to why we have shepherds, to open our eyes to the mysteries in the word. And he, um, today I'm going to talk to us about the power and impact of discipleship. The power and impact of discipleship. I'm going to teach it in a way you've probably never heard it before. Probably. Yeah. Uh, apostle has said he's ready. So I don't know about you, but if my apostle says he's ready, ah, that means I'm ready. <laughs> Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 to 16 is our scripture. So we are going to read it aloud together, then we'll break down a few things. By the time we finish, you will understand the power and impact of discipleship. Matthew chapter 5, uh, my screen, it's about to come onto my screen. It will be helpful if it does. 
Can we read it together? One, two, three, let's go. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. That is our anchor scripture. And from that scripture, you are going to see the power and the impact of discipleship. So we'll start at verse, start at verse 14. So Jesus is speaking to his disciples and, and he's teaching them many things. And one of the things he, he teaches them is he starts telling them, sort of like trying to show them, start at verse 14, please. My scripture is still at verse 13. My screen. Please put it at verse 14. Thank you. Um, he, he starts giving them pictures, sort of like communicate to them who they really are. He tells them you're the salt. That's a picture he uses that I'm not going to delve into a lot. Then I just want us to use the picture of light. Okay? Jesus looks at them and he tells them, you are the light of the world. Now, light, you see this light here? Eh? Yeah, the light that we see here. Light is not generated here. Light is not generated. Light is an effect of current, electrical current. Electricity, okay? Ah, now, I have to explain a few things. So, <laughs> when electricity is generated at the, at the different hydropower generating stations where, where we get it from, it... <laughs> It is moved to different places through conductors, okay, that you call wires, different conductors. And so it ends up, I will use the example of this bulb because it has a filament. It ends up in, it ends up in a, <laughs> people, <laughs> please, it ends up in a bulb like that one, okay? And the, the electrical current ends up in a bulb like that one. And in that bulb, once the electricity goes through the filament, it causes the filament to heat up, okay? And once it heats, it emits certain pockets or pockets of light called photons. Uh, please, no, your neighbor is understanding. Yeah, they, they are rejoicing at the word. Hey, <laughs> this good treasure. <laughs> I'm helping your neighbor. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, photons, okay? F people, photons, <laughs> photons. <laughs> yeah. So it is those photons that the, the combination of those, okay, that gives you the light that you see, okay? Now, we are going to talk about, I'm going to walk you through, I've already given you one of the things, okay, that light is generated somewhere, okay? Light is uh, electric, rather, light is an effect of electrical current that is generated somewhere. So we have different hydropower stations in Uganda where we generate the electrical current, okay? What would happen to a city? Because it says a city that is set on a hill. It says we are the light of the world. What would happen to this city, Kampala, hmm? at night? If those people were faithful in generating the electricity, but they never transmitted it into the city. Yeah, they are faithfully... 
generating the electricity and storing it up, I don't even know where, in different things. But they don't transmit it into the city. What would happen to our city at night? <laughs> there will be darkness, right? Because the filaments are not heating up to provide, <laughs> which give you light. Is the issue that the current is not being generated? Is that the reason there is darkness? The reason there is darkness is because whereas the electric current is being generated, it is not transmitted and distributed. That is why you have UEGCL and UEDCL. One generates, the other one distributes. Uh huh. UETCL, uh huh, yes. UETCL transmits, then UETCL distributes. Generate, transmit, distribute. Ah, ah, umeme. Umeme works for you in this year. Yeah. People. <laughs> People. You need to stick with me. We are going somewhere. Remember the topic is the power and impact of discipleship. So what happens if you... UEGCL generates the electricity. And UETCL transmits the electricity. But they are transmitting it, for example, if they are transmitting electricity here, to, yeah, to the different substations, and maybe the substations have distributed the electricity to this room, what would happen if we did not have these lights here? Would you have light? Is the issue that the light is not being generated? Rather, the electricity is not being generated? Is the issue that the electricity is not being transmitted? Is the issue that the electricity is not being distributed? What is the issue? There are no bulbs. There are no bulbs. People, the comments. Eh? <laughs> we should have a microphone in the congregation to just amplify just a few comments. That's why I love worship harvest. Hey, apostles created a good culture where we rejoice and receive the word with joy. Uh -uh. <laughs> that is another okay. Scenario three. Mark these scenarios because I'm coming back to explain them in terms of discipleship and the church. What happens, okay? Electricity is generated, transmitted, and distributed. The lights are installed. Okay? The bulbs with their filaments on, working very well, okay? But the switch is off. That is the work of the enemy. You're trying to confuse the enemy. <laughs> Do you realize that in all these scenarios, there is no light, not because the current, the electrical current is not being generated, transmitted or distributed. That's because there is a fault somewhere in the people receiving and using that current. So the bulbs are, are installed, but the light is switched off. So you will not have light. We are talking about a city. Yeah, built on a high hill. <laughs> You're talking about a city. I'm still painting different scenarios. Please mark the different scenarios. You're going to need them when I start explaining. How they apply to discipleship. 
Okay. Imagine, okay, that in this whole city, okay, after they generate, transmit, distribute, install the bulbs, they switch on the, the bulb, okay? And in the whole of Kampala, okay, there are only 10 bulbs shining. Is there light in the city? Who is that to say no? Is there light in the city? <laughs> it depends on where you are. <laughs> if you're in Nigeria, that... <laughs> okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Huh? The foxes are yelling. <laughs> For the ten lights, one is in Makerere, one is in Luzira. Of course, one is in Chitukutwe because the power there doesn't go off. <laughs> then, uh, Chiwatule. Uh, hmm. It is too close to Nigeria, but. <laughs> yeah, okay. The lights, you have ten lights. That means the people have generated electricity, transmitted, distributed. People have installed bulbs. Probably there are bulbs in every home and in every room. But they are only, no, they are probably there are, are only 10 bulbs in the city. That's one scenario where there are only 10 bulbs in the city that are switched on. Yeah. Because it could be that all the other homes have the bulbs, but the bulbs are not switched on. Mm. They are afraid of the electricity. No, not yet. <laughs> they blew up. <laughs> yeah. But the bulbs are installed, but they are not switched on. There could be another scenario where there are no bulbs. Mark the two scenarios. Scenario where you actually don't have bulbs in the city, so you only have 10 bulbs that are lighting. And a scenario where you have many bulbs installed in, in the city and only 10 are giving off light. The city will still be in darkness. Not because the light is absent, but because the light is insufficient. Insufficient light. Are you flowing with me? What would happen if the city had a light in every room, on every car? <laughs> yeah, it's not obvious. So, yeah. Lights on some cars, when you try to... In every home, in every room, on every street, every certain number of meters, in every clothes, in every whatever. What would happen if the city was filled with bulbs that are switched on across the whole city? What would the city look like? It would be lit, right? You would be living in the lit city. A lit city. One more scenario. Just one more. And then after I'll start explaining. Actually two. But let me start one. What would happen if, because all this while I've not talked about an industry that is manufacturing bulbs and is training people how to install the bulbs and switch on the lights the right way across the city or across the country. What would happen if we had a production plant that produces bulbs and releases electricians and different people who know how to operate the whole electrical system and you had an industry like that in every single village in Uganda? Do you think we would ever run short of bulbs? We would never would have enough light shining everywhere in... Uh, everywhere. Yeah. You would have 
enough light shining bright everywhere. Did I say one more scenario I'll paint to? <laughs> what would happen if you got all the lights that could possibly be lighting in other parts of the city and you brought them all in this room and switched them on? Pardon? <laughs> Glare! <laughs> you would not be able to see you, like the light would cease fulfilling its purpose because it is too much light concentrated in one place. So you end up not able to see what is even a meter or so in front of you because you've gotten all the lights and put them in the same place. In fact, it, yeah, it regenerates a lot of heat. Yeah, you'll be so uncomfortable in the room. Meanwhile, there is light. But it is too bright because it is concentrated in one place. It is concentrated in one place. Okay, like maybe, the, okay, even if it was outside, it would only be able to give off light up to a certain distance. No matter how many lights you put on this building, it can only light up up to a certain distance and the rest of the city will still stay dark. Jesus says you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill. I'll come back to that one. Apostle opened my eyes one time. I was teaching about this scripture, then he opened my eyes to another thing in the same scripture that I had never seen. Yeah, I'm going, it's coming, it's coming. I need you to stay. <laughs> Give me the next verse. I see whether he uses the analogy of a lamp. Aha. He says, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket. Let me ask you, what is the end goal of a lamp be beyond, besides just giving off light? Hmm? Capacity to see, yes. Reveal things to you, that's all part of seeing. That's beauty. Do you know that? Yes? To attend the wedding, if you were foolish. Virgin. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Pastor Angela. <laughs> she, yes, she anointed like that. You are going to say something. Do you know, have you used lamps before? The ones where you put kerosene and you light a matchbox and it lights? Tadoba. Or a candle. Besides it giving you light, do you realize that it will not have fulfilled its purpose if it does not light up another lamp? Oh yeah, one of the reasons it is there is so that it can light up other lamps. Because when you're in some of those candle, whatever services, one person has a candle and different people come and get light from that candle. Because the candle has a shelf life, at a certain point that thing, the wax will melt all away. What is the thing inside there? The wick. Yeah. It will keep reducing until it's no more. And so the only way that candle will keep on lighting is through lighting other candles. <laughs> yeah. The power and impact of what? Discipleship. Yeah. It will light on for generations because it went to the next candle, to the next candle, to the next candle, to the next candle, to the next candle. Application. We talked about generating, right? Generating electricity and power. That is the first stage of discipleship. What does Acts 1.8 say? Yeah. 
But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has done what? Has come upon you. You shall receive power. Apostle Moses has kept on saying that the Holy Spirit rarely comes upon non-praying people. The Bible told us today in Psalm 119 verse 130 that the entrance of your word as well gives light. So, the way you generate spiritual power, which is the very first stage of discipleship. Okay, one of the initial stages of discipleship. For a person who is born again, I'm talking to believers, is in the prayer place. In the place of prayer, communing with the word. Luke six twelve. What happens? Jesus goes up to the mountain to pray. And he spent, he continued all night in prayer to God. You know what he's doing? Generating the power. Look, you will not succeed as a discipler if you don't generate the power. So it will be useless to even talk about the power of discipleship when you don't have the power as a disciple. Because without the power, you don't have the impact. Generating, you go to the place of prayer, 5 a.m. Rekabashata. You come for New Dawn Camp, 6 a.m. Makalado Zekata. Flow prayer, you are praying, you are reading the word. What is happening is that on the inside of you, you are generating power. I've never met any successful disciple who does not generate power by prayer and the word. Anyone you see producing disciples, just know. Yeah, because wisdom is justified by her children. Just know that somewhere there is a place where they are generating the power. Time fails me, but <laughs> I'll read you many, many things. <laughs> they are generating power through prayer. Worship harvest. We are not going to see the desired impact of our discipleship if we do not strengthen our abiding disciplines. The fruitfulness, the year of fruitfulness is actually the year of disciplined abiding. Because the thing you can control is your abiding. Yeah. God is the one who gives you the fruit. You you abide, you provide a conducive environment. Ah, now I've gone into that. That's, that's a different sermon. Disciplined, abiding. Yeah, that's a different sermon. You abide in prayer, in the word, in following, in what? You're creating an environment for God to release fruit on all, wherever you are. Yeah, disciplined, abiding. So, remember I told you about a scenario where they generate the power. Where they generate the power, but they do not transmit it and distribute it. Or where they generate the power, yeah, they do not transmit it and distribute it to place it where it needs to be, in the buildings where it needs to be. And I told you about a power plant set up in the different places such that they can produce these bulbs where you can come and where you can connect and switch on the light, okay? The second stage in evangelism after you have done your praying. Anyway, now I realize I'm going along the lines of the peace, <laughs> the, 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 the embracing revival. Yeah, praying. Preaching. That is the next thing. Preaching. Yeah. Because look, you will generate power as much as you want. Take me back to Acts 1.8. You will generate power as much as you want. But if it is not being transmitted to a bulb, it is not going to give off light. The city will stay in darkness, not because you're not praying. Praying, you're praying. But there are no bulbs. You don't have a place where you are taking all that power you're generating in prayer to cause an, the photon effect where you, there is light. 
That's why Jesus tells them, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses. Evangelism. Preaching. When I was preparing, the thing that came to me is that when you preach and you convert a person and you get them born again, it's like you have produced a bulb that has the potential to shine. You have produced a bulb that has the potential to, to shine. And so the more bulbs you have in a place, the greater the potential of the light in that place. I'm using the word potential. But is your second stage. You're praying, you're doing all those things, but you need to produce bulbs. There needs to be a system where you are producing the bulbs such that when you transfer your electricity, it, it is having impact somewhere. There are people receiving the electricity that you're generating, transmitting, and distributing. What did Jesus tell the lady who touched the hem of his garment? I perceive that power. Transmitting the power. It is there, but he's transmitting it. Now, ha, ha, ha. Let's give me verse 16 of Matthew 5, where we are. Time is my friend. I'll finish in time. All right. He says, let, can we read together? One, two, three, let, let's go. Let your light so shine before men. Pause. In other words, you can have light potential to shine and you're not shining. Yeah. You cannot, uh, why would he tell them, okay, you're the light. Now you let your light so shine before men. Why would he tell them that? Because you can be a bulb like this one. You have the potential to light but you are not lighting. You're not shining. Yet you have filaments. <laughs> yeah, you're in class. <laughs> Yet you have filaments. When I was preparing, what came to my mind is discipleship is like switching on a bulb and causing it to light. That is a stage in discipleship where you switch on a bulb where you find a person whose understanding of church, they are a bulb, but their understanding of church is plot. Hmm? Plot, plot, plot. And then you find another one who is trying, huh? yeah, to avoid the whole idea of doing certain things like church planting for many years that I won't mention, as you heard in the interviews. You need a disciple who is able to identify and say, mm, but we have darkness in Chitukutwe. We have a bulb that has the potential to shine in Chitukutwe. We are generating the power, transmitting it, and distributing it, but there is darkness in Chitukutwe. And so he goes for an anniversary. And he says, hello, I am coming to commission you. I'm coming to switch on the bulb. That is what discipleship does to men. It switches men on. Because he says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. You have the capacity for the good works, but they are not visible. To cause glory to your father in heaven. Yeah. When a pastor creates a WhatsApp group. Yeah. And they add you. They give it a name. Yeah. And then they write a certain location of a certain city in a certain country. On a certain continent that starts with the letter of the, of the alphabet. And then they wink. Do you know what is happening? Switching on. Because the potential to shine is there. But the person is not yet what? They need someone to just turn on their light like zoop and whoosh. 
They start lighting wherever they are. But darkness is expelled. Their light shining starts to shine before men. I've seen something else there. Those of you who are waiting to go to heaven, God has created you as the light so you can shine before men here on earth. Because in heaven you don't need the sun or moon or what. There is the light of God. Moving on swiftly, because that wasn't part of the plan. Mm. <laughs> Before teacher. Yeah. You're switching on the light of men. Now, I gave you a scenario where you have 10 bulbs shining in a whole city. Do you remember that scenario? That is akin to having very few disciples. Into having, meanwhile, I'm still in my Matthew chapter 5. <laughs> yeah. But it's akin to having very few disciples. Because if you have very few disciples, now I'm not talking believers, not my language, okay? A believer is a bulb. A disciple is a bulb that is shining. One has the potential to shine, the other one is actually shining. You can have many believers bulbs installed all around the city, all around your village and town, who are not switched on are believers. Yeah. You see, this is the new dawn camp. If there are still any believers here who are not yet switched on, you're, you're getting switched on. That is why you're being exposed to the word. Yeah. See, remember, pastor who left new dawn camp and we can ish, fire. <laughs> Power. A pastor who left New Dawn Camp and went and just planted a church. He's like, ah, uh, uh, yeah. He said, wasn't that your testimony, uh, pastor who, Pastor Silas from Tsoga? Yeah. He came here for New Dawn Camp and he's like, uh, I, I'm switched on. I'm going to plant a church. You know, that's another degree that I'm going to come to. But right now, if you have few disciples, you are like that city that has many bulbs. Ah, let me start here. If you have few converts, you're not winning as many souls, okay? For you, it is even a worse problem. There are no bulbs in the city. Yeah. There are no bulbs. If you only have 10 people who are converted in a certain city, I was talking to someone who lives in a certain country in West Africa, and she was telling me in that country, the believers are like the eh, min minority in the country. Like... <laughs> I was talking to her and asking her, what, so, uh-huh, yeah. You know the light. <laughs> You've been there a few years. You see, the issue there is not that there are many bulbs that are not switched on. The issue there is that they are not bulbs. There are no bulbs. So you, you, even if you go and switch on that thing without a bulb here, it's useless. Do you understand? So you need to win many souls. That is why in the test, in the quiz, you had... What is that thing? Commission one, one, one. No, no, sorry. Sorry. Connection one, one, one. No, it's commission one, one, one. What is happening to my head? It's a good thing. Commission one, one, one. Where every MC is supposed to lead at least one person to Christ every week. Do you know what you're doing? You are producing more bulbs. You're creating a lot of potential to shine. But then if you, out of the many bulbs you have, if you only have 10 bulbs shining, potential abounds. Light insufficient. And people may come and try to gather around those bulbs, but they, look, you can only gather a few people around 10 bulbs to have light. In a city of up to 4 million or so people, you cannot say I'm only giving you 10 bulbs to give you light. You're going to cause a stampede and people will start fighting and they'll start looking at those bulbs as very special. Mm. Isn't that what happens in the church? Not these churches here, but... Yeah. Where there is one person who is shining and so there are all these crowds trying to come to receive light from one person. Few disciples... And I can tell you that the Bible does not encourage us anywhere to have few disciples. Because Jesus, yeah. Yeah. 
That is what happened to Lot. To, yeah, Lot. Sodom and Gomorrah. Second Peter chapter 2 verse 4 to 8. My time is running, so I'll just be giving you a bit of the scripture references because I need to show you something real quick. Second Peter chapter, four verse, chapter 2 verse 4 to 8. Where Lot was so righteous in a city with his family, few bulbs, but the whole city around eh, was just in darkness. And so it, the city was destroyed, not because there was no light, but because the light was insufficient to expel all the darkness that was in the city. Insufficient light. Eh, the first one was prayer and the word abiding. The second was evangelism. The third, discipleship. Akin to switching on the light in the city. The fourth, you need to have many disciples, not just a few. If you have few, then there is a problem. I told you about the picture of uh -huh. Mama Shuta. Isaiah 60, 22, that says a little one shall become a thousand. And a small one, a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in its time. Because God wants many lights in a place. The Bible tells us in, in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 40 to 41, especially verse 41, where it says that then those who gladly received his word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. 3,000 souls, 3,000 potential bulbs. And as you read through the progression in the book of Acts, you realize that there was a multiplication of disciples. In Acts chapter 6, verse 7, it says, Then the word of God spread, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. Yeah. So they moved all these people they won in one day, potential bulbs to shine, and started switching them on. That is how they won over the whole of Rome. By multiplying bulbs and switching them. By evangelism and discipleship. And multiplying many, 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 many. Not a few disciples. To... Give me the discipleship math. Let me, let's, let me first do the discipleship math. Then I'll tell you about the production plant. And then we'll see how we wind this up. Discipleship math. I believe you have that image. It would be crucial to have it on the, on the screen. Um, just give me a signal if you don't have it so I can know um, what to do. I sent it in the notes. Someone is about to tell me what's going on. You don't have it? All right. So Apostle has painted a, a scenario of us. He has done math, okay? Discipleship math. He has painted a scenario where every one of you starts making at least 10 disciples every three years, right? Uh, every three years. You journey with 10 people every three years. And at the end of the three years, out of the ten that you have journeyed with, you only have five, okay? But complete the loop of discipleship, which is multiplying themselves and making other disciples, okay? Um, in, if those five disciples that you have been working with, how many of you think it's so hard to disciple ten people for three years? The same ten people. Please don't put up your hand. This is not when you put up your hand. Okay, how many of you think it is doable? Please put up your hand because this is when you put up your hand. <laughs> yeah, it is doable to disciple 10 people for a certain period. And he says that if, if you go with just a 50% success rate every, in, in, in a period of three years, every three years, in six years, you'll have 25 disciples, 25 lights shining. In nine years, you'll have 125 disciples. By the time you hit 15 years, you'll be at 3,125 disciples. By the time you hit 21 years, you'll be at 78,000 disciples. By the time you hit 30 years, you'll be at over 9.8, 9.7 million disciples. 
9.7 million lights shining as a result of you. Now, this discipleship math excites me because I see a picture where it is working and it is working better than the math that I see here. We planted Worship Harvest Macquarie in 2018, in April. We set out in Jan 2018 to plant that location with 13 people. We went with 13 people. This, this is 2020 what? 2023. 2023 is five years from then. The last time I checked on our discipleship impact assessment, which is uh, really the count of how many disciples we have, people in mission or communities in Worship Harvest Macquarie, we, we have 647 disciples. This 647. This is in a period of five years. According to the math, we would only be able to achieve that in 12 years. Ah, voila. The math is on my screen. It's about to appear on your screen. Ah, wow. The miracle has happened. 640. Over 640. We, that is supposed to be slightly past 12 years. But we've been in existence. How many years? Five. So in other words, this math, like the reality is much better than the math. And the people who are being prepared to make disciples now, you know much more than, you, than some of us knew when we were planting the church. In other words, you, you will achieve much more than we have achieved in five years. Yeah, like all these church plants that are starting, I've been looking at them and I am excited. Yeah, because I see the possibility that what I have achieved in five years, they are going to achieve in a, in a less time. Because what worship harvest, the people that started worship harvest in five years, how many were we? Hmm. <coughs> okay, well, we, I was there, but in the spirit. <laughs> yeah, you, I, they, they were probably not more than 600 disciples then in five years. But because we came much later with refined systems and better things, we are more than 600 in five years. Yeah. Worship Harvest. Worship Harvest, we celebrated 16 years, right? That was last year. 16 years of existence. And we have, currently we have over 19,000 disciples in Worship Harvest Ministries. 19,000, 16 years. This one says that we are supposed to be at that number slightly over 18 years. Yeah, somewhere after 18 years. But we've hit the number in 16 what? 16 years. So the thing I'm talking about of producing bulbs and switching on lights is possible for every one of us in this place. It is possible. It is possible for you to multiply the bulbs and switch on as many bulbs in this city so we can have enough light and expel all manner of darkness out of this city. It is possible. It is doable. You can disciple 10 people while you're doing your job, while you're attending lectures at campus, while you are doing whatever it is that you're doing. It is possible. And we should not stop people from doing it because anyone can do it. Yeah. The series we just did in December, everyone gets to play. Take me back to Matthew 5. I'll show you something, then after I talk about that second thing, then the last one, and we'll be done. It's going to be brief, I promise. Take me back to verse 14. He says you are the light of the world. A city. So in this statement, Jesus uses two pictures about the, the disciples. He says to them, you're the light. But then after he tells them, you are a city. You know, I was trying to look up. I just went to India. Because it has one of the biggest populations. A city in India will have on average 8.8 .8 million lights. When you come on average, when you combine all the different forms of bulbs, etc. They will have over 8.8 .8 million bulbs in one city. And even then, <laughs> the light 
is insufficient when they have 8.8 million bulbs in the city. I tried to look for how many bulbs are in Kampala, but yeah, I couldn't get. If you Google and find it, or if you know, please tell me. Even Google doesn't know. Maybe chat GPT knows. If you don't know chat GPT. So Jesus is telling these people that, yes, you are the light, but I expect you to become a city. The thing I was telling you that the end goal of the lamp is for it to light other lamps. So the only way you become a city, you see, if you get this bulb and try to split the filaments, okay, and disperse one filament there, one there, one there, look, it won't give you as much light as it is doing here. The only solution is, if, maybe if you're using a candle, if you get a candle and chop it into small pieces and put it around, it won't give you as much light. The solution is for you to get many, 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 many candles. Because you, it's not enough for you to just be the light. God expects you to become a city, but is set on a hill. In other words, God expects that you multiply your light and cause over, at least on average, 8.8 .8 million people to shine. That is why it's, it's in the same statement. You are the light of the world, a city. Talking about the same people. He calls them the light and he calls them a city. I told you about the production plant. The church is like a production plant of bulbs and electricians and all those people. The more production plants you have in a place, okay, that are producing the bulbs to shine, that are training people how to switch on the lights so the bulbs can shine. That are showing people where the best places to install the bulbs. And that's what apostles do. They just go to different places and they get that bulb and say, you, you will be there. You, you will be there. You, will, you need to shine there. That's what they do. So that when you have a church, you are a step further. You are, the only way you'll become, not the only way, but one of the most effective ways, let me just say the only way, you'll become a city is if you become a what? A church. Because the end goal of discipleship is church planting. As I learned from Apostle yesterday. The end goal of discipleship is church planting. The end goal of Jesus' disciples, okay? They, they all became church planters, right? And Jesus is an example of us, Right? That means the end goal of your discipleship should be church planting. In other words, you have not completed the loop of discipleship if people have not participated in planting a church. And whereas you're there shining your light and you're shining it bright, it is not enough to expel the darkness in the city because they are not as many production plants that are not only shining light, but that are producing bulbs and training people how to switch on those bulbs such that they can shine and releasing other bulbs and, trans, uh, 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 and changing them from one place to another, to another, to another, such that we can have the whole city lit. You all said you want a lit city. Isn't that what you said? The end goal of discipleship is church planting. The next time you read that verse, remember the things we have talked about light. Because you are the light of the world. And you are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. That is your potential. If only you do discipleship, the impact is limitless. If you do discipleship to the end of to the end, which is church planting, then your impact will be much, 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 much more. Then you can possibly think or imagine. Amen. Do you receive the word of God? Do you rejoice at the word as one who has received great treasure? Thank you so much.